The the eugenics. Miscarriage? You want us to do eugenics? Let's um, say, well, here's hypothetical. He, let's it, say, it, let's it say. Is not, okay, I am not arguing. Yeah, we are going to do this. And that is eugenics, Destiny. And I don't appreciate you. You're not okay. going to treat me like I'm a f***ing idiot. I have been doing this for a long time. Like, this is this is what I do. You're 19. Right? I don't think so, you've been doing anything for a long time. But I'm not talking about protecting a fetus. I'm talking about protecting a conscious experience. I mean, so all I conscious that, experience is subjective, right? We are subjects and we have a subjective conscious experience. It's like, we can't like objectively measure it. You disagree with that? I'm sorry, can you tell me about the objective conscious experience? When I'm talking about consciousness, I'm talking about... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, whoa. you can't really be this That's bad not, faith. I need you to give me a better... Okay, do your moral grandstanding. Then afterwards, I need you to give me a better summary of the other side. Because there's no possible way that that's like... Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to play piano while you moral grandstand for like two minutes. And then I'm going to ask you again for the question. Can you explain the downsides of the other side if you force women to go through pregnancies they don't want to? And it has to be more than just, I accidentally protected life. Let me know when you're ready. I have a conversation with someone. Like, I'm not trying to morally grandstand, right? I don't appreciate you calling this morally grandstanding. Again, we have had this conversation multiple times where you're continuously disrespecting me and I don't appreciate you. Jubilee Zoomer wanted to talk with you. I had to temporarily block him to rent dog pal because I'm just not dealing with that right now. But if he wants to have a real conversation at some point, I think it'd be good. I have a feeling this is all he has though, just trying to dunk on people. I also get really annoyed when people are like, oh, you're just trying to dunk on people. No, I'm not, bro. I was relentlessly good faith in that conversation. How can you say that I was the one searching for dunks? Like, how could you ever watch that conversation and come away thinking that I'm the one just trying to, I don't know, felt stupid. No. How dare you? Oh boy. Hello. Hey, what's up? Well, Jim, what's going on? Uh, nothing much. How are you doing? Pretty good. I just got back from the doctor, like I told you. Cool. Well, uh, how was your doctor visit? Was it exciting? Super exciting. They told me I have a virus, which is super cool to hear. Cool. Well, that's exciting. Um, <laughs> hopefully you're going to make a full recovery, I'm sure. Uh, Thank in, you. Okay, introduce yourself for the audience is dying to know who you are. Hi, my name is Ayala Eisenberg. Um, I am on Twitter at Prolife US and also on Instagram. And I recently did my second Jubilee Middle Ground talking about abortion, which is um, how Destiny came to be my number one fan. Awesome. Um, true. So you uh, were tweeting about me recently. You seemed fairly upset. Um, do you want to catch us up on what's going on with that? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I was upset. I just, I make tweets. Like, that's what I do. I'm basically a professional tweeter. Um, you did some kind of podcast with Lila Rose and Kristen Hawkins, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, there were a couple things that I commented on. I, there were two clips that I saw of you from this, like, real asshole <laughs> the guy who posted this clip was just such a dickhead um but he posted a clip of you saying like to call a fetus a person is like to call a nut a tree and then you uh there was another clip where you said like um according to pro-life logic like miscarriages would be the same as leaving an infant to starve and everybody mm -hmm. was really upset about that and that was basically the two things that i said something about okay well where do you want to start? Which one of those do you want to start with? Um, I feel like we've already talked a little bit about the first one. I, yeah. Which, wait, what, wait, what was the first one again? The part about it I not mean, end up being a tree? Yeah, I think we've talked about that. We had like a back and forth about that on Twitter, but we haven't talked about the second one. Okay. Well, we can talk about the second one if you want. Sure. One of your orbiters has already got into me, or got into it with me over that one, so. Okay, then that means you should be even more prepared for the conversation, huh? I don't think you could be more prepared for a conversation about miscarriages than, like, having had multiple. So, yeah, I would say that I'm prepared to have a conversation about the reality of miscarriage. Sure, we can talk about it, but I don't think having a miscarriage means you necessarily know anything about a miscarriage. You can literally have a miscarriage without even knowing you're pregnant or that you miscarried, but... Um, Sure, okay, well, where do you want to start? Do you want me to open my argument, or do you want to give me your pushback against my argument? Um, I mean, go ahead. I, I don't want to take what you said out of context or misconstrue what you said, so I'd appreciate you telling me, like, exactly what you meant by that, and I don't, like, want to put words in your mouth or anything. Yeah, sure. So, 
basically, if we're considering fetuses to be human persons, lives that ought to be defended and endowed with all the same rights as like a baby, then in my opinion, we should be taking way more aggressive steps to limit the amount of miscarriages that are happening happening with women that are having sex. So I don't know if that would mean that if you have sex, you immediately have to check into a facility somewhere, or you're like, we outlaw sex without using a ton of protection firsthand or whatever. Um, but we have to do something to be very, very, very aggressive to help with the massive amount of early, like first trimester or early weeks miscarriages that are happening without people even realizing it. Because it's possibly like the greatest loss of life that's occurring worldwide right now. So like, at the highest estimates, like about 20% of pregnancies end in miscarriage. It's 10 to 20% of mm -hmm. pregnancies. Um, so I guess what you were saying in the clip, again, correct me if I'm wrong, you were saying we we would, according to pro-life logic, need to check women into hospitals as soon as they have sex so that we can monitor whether or not they get pregnant. And then if they are pregnant, we have to keep them there and make sure that they're healthy. Is that what you said? Um, something to make people aware that they're pregnant early on and then take really aggressive steps to limit um, the likelihood of a miscarriage, yes. Just like we do with born children, right? Like how we permanently hospitalize them to make sure that they don't die of any illness. Um, I mean, you do hospitalize them early on if you're at risk for illness. So I have a son who you was hospitalized you early hospitalize on. You don't hospitalize all children. I didn't say you hospitalize sure. all children. But if it is the case that one out of five pregnancies are ending in miscarriage, and a lot, and maybe even more, and women just aren't aware of it, it seems like we should be taking really aggressive steps to correct for those early miscarriages, right? Because if that's true, well, <laughs> that means more children have died from miscarriage than have died from abortion, right? Well, do you know what a miscarriage is? Like, explain to me what you think a miscarriage is and why you think miscarriages happen. Uh, I imagine there's probably tons of different reasons why miscarriages happen. There's probably a lot of different types of miscarriages. I'm sure that there are some miscarriages that happen because of, for some reason, implantation doesn't happen. I'm sure there are some miscarriages that happen because of genetic coding issues um, in the early days of the zygote splitting apart. I'm sure there are probably miscarriages that happen because of the condition of the mother being unaware that she's pregnant. Uh, there's probably a ton of reasons why miscarriages happen. I don't know them all. I can look it up on Wikipedia if you want me to. So I'll explain it to you because I actually do know this. Um, most miscarriages happen, like a majority of miscarriages happen because there's genetic chromosomal issues um, with the embryo when it's first developing um, and it just physically cannot grow and develop properly. So a majority of miscarriages are not preventable. There's nothing that you can do. It's just because of the way that the DNA came together, it, it wasn't formed properly. Um, and the other miscarriages that aren't because of that, which I mean, again, like, we're talking about things like bifurcated uteruses. So like the way a woman's uterus is physically formed, like her uterus is shaped in such a way that it's difficult for her body to stay pregnant um, and for implantation to happen properly. There's women who are like chronically underweight or they have some kind of chronic illness um, that makes it difficult for their body to deal with pregnancy. But it's really not something like there's there's almost a, like 0% of miscarriages that are happening because women aren't like getting the proper nutrients or because women work out like somebody somebody like the guy who posted that clip was basically arguing like women who work out and have miscarriages because of that and i think there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation around why miscarriages happen and i think that's really dangerous and it contributes to this culture of stigma that we have around child loss but i want to make it very clear that like a majority of miscarriages we can't do anything about and miscarriages is it, it's in no way a woman's fault when she has a miscarriage like you can almost guarantee that the reason she had it was not something she had any control over um okay that might be the case um, i'm looking up and i'm seeing uh, about 50 percent of miscarriages are associated with extra or missing chromosomes most often this is from the mayo clinic um i guess we could bump that number up more if you wanted to but let's say let's say that i grant all of this, let's say that it's because of chromosomal abnormalities, then miscarriages are happening because of this reason. Let's say I, let's say I increase that from 50 to 100% or 99%. Um, wouldn't we then say that since we have the technology to do like in vitro fertilization and stuff, shouldn't we be using alternative methods of conception that might have a lower risk of these genetic abnormalities happening or? You think IVF has a lower risk of abnormalities than normal sex? I don't know, sex? I'm asking, does it? I am under the impression that it doesn't. Um, in fact, it's a very common thing for IVF conceived babies to be discarded because they have genetic abnormalities because there's issues that happen with the way that they're created in a lab. 
Um, I don't That's know. That's a common pro-life argument against IVF is because there is a significant number of embryos that are simply discarded and destroyed because they have genetic abnormalities. Gotcha. Let's see. I don't know much about IVS or IVF. Let me check. For our women over 35, oh, that's a different thing. Oh, and then also here's i I'll shoot you this. I haven't done too much digging into this before. These are all kind of peripheral abortion arguments, but um, this seems to say that the results of this were the potentially modifiable pre-pregnant risk factors associated with increased miscarriage risk were age of 30 years or more at conception, underweight and obesity during pregnancy. The modifiable risk factors were alcohol consumption, lifting over 20 kilograms daily and night work. We estimate that 25.2% of the miscarriages might be prevented by reduction of all these risk factors to low levels. Modification of risk factors acting before and during pregnancy could lead to prevention of 14.7 and 12.5% respectively of all miscarriages. Do you think if you could prevent 10 to 20% of miscarriages, do you think that would be worth taking aggressive of steps um, early on after sexual activity to try to, I guess, like mitigate that risk? I mean, it depends what you mean by aggressive steps, right? So like you can definitely inform women much better about like what causes miscarriages, like what their risk is for a miscarriage. Because I think that a lot of OBGYNs just don't take the time to do that properly and have those conversations. Um, but I think there's a difference, right? And in, in saying that you're not allowed to kill somebody versus the government stepping in and telling you that you have to take every precaution conceivable to make sure that your child doesn't die. Because um, I disagree just like with, so on So just some like of with this. born children, just like with born children, uh -huh. there's a lot of things that could cause a child to die. Obviously, again, with miscarriage, it's overwhelmingly things that are not preventable. But with born children, the government doesn't have the authority to come into your house and bubble wrap every surface and take these extreme measures like hospitalizing your child constantly to monitor their health um, that's, that's not something that you can demand of people, right? But you yeah, can sure. demand that don't people to, don't um, kill their children. Yeah, um, we don't have to take it all the way. So like, for instance, my understanding is that if you let your child starve to death, you would probably be in big trouble by the government. I don't know if you would catch a murder charge for that, but um, I, I know that you can have significant penalties. I know that like parents, um, I, I haven't seen the details, but I know there were parents that were charged with murder recently because their 17 year old child was killed, or not was killed, wasn't killed, I'm sorry, but they died due to neglect. Um, I'd have to look at the details of that. But um, the, the sometimes people who are pro-life try to draw this big distinction between allowing harm and doing harm. But I think in some cases, we would recognize that there's not much of a difference, right? Like if I had a six-month-old child, I set it down and I didn't feed it for two weeks, nobody would say like, okay, well, you didn't kill him because it's not like you actively did something to him. You just let them die. I don't think people would see as much of a distinction there. I mean, sure, but like that's not what a miscarriage is, right? So like if you are pregnant, you are feeding your baby. You, you would not yourself be alive if you were not feeding your baby while you're pregnant. You might not be getting all of the possible essential nutrients, but like generally speaking, you're, you are feeding your baby. And, and the body is incredibly resilient, right? Human beings are incredibly resilient. So even with these issues, like if you weren't eating enough while pregnant, that's not usually gonna cause your baby to die. That's not something that's happening. Again, miscarriages are happening because of these mostly issues that we, we can't really do anything about. Like even with modern medical technology, these are things that are fundamental to pregnancy and it's just sure, a that's part fine. of life. But so it seems like sometimes, sometimes, mm -hmm. people die. sometimes people die. That's not the same thing as killing people though, is it? Sure, but if babies are dying, usually we would take really aggressive steps to limit the number of babies dying. If Generally. we can do anything about it, yeah, sure. But we're talking about things that we physically cannot do anything about. Yeah, but if it was the case that like 20% of miscarriages could be um, prevented, then w wouldn't we want to aggressively do something to ensure because how many pregnancies are there right and in a, in a given... well, what exactly are you suggesting we do to prevent those miscarriages um i don't know it could be aggressive dieting plans it could be um restricting the type of people that are allowed to get pregnant depending on likelihood so for eugenics miscarriage. you want us to do eugenics um i think if you want anything us to have i think if, i think if anything I mean, you could view this as eugenics or you could view this as the opposite of eugenics, technically. <laughs> because if you're the one that's viewing a fetus as a life, arguably you saying that anybody should be able to have kids when some people are more likely to have to murder children over and over again by engaging in sexual behavior that they know has a high likelihood of causing a miscarriage, you could argue in a roundabout way that that's kind of a form of eugenics. But I Yeah, mean, again, that's not what murder is. It's not murder to have a child die outside of your control that's still not what murder sure. is sure let's um, say well here's if, a hypothetical if, let's if, say if, let's it say is not okay, i am not arguing yeah. Uh, yeah we are gonna do this i'm not arguing that people who have for example like chronic health conditions and severe like um disabilities that may that they have like their carriers for 
I don't think those people should pre be prevented from having sex and conceiving children just because their child could possibly inherit that con that could have have an inherent con condition. Excuse me, and that child could die. My cat just bit my leg, and. Um, I don't think that that's this eugenics program is the same thing as saying you're not allowed to kill people. Like, I think that eugenics is the opposite of the pro-life ideology. Like, Margaret Sanger made that very clear. Eugenics is a very pro-abortion stance. And mm -hmm. I don't think that limiting the amount of life we're allowed to bring into the world mm -hmm. based off of how they could possibly maybe die because of all the things that could go wrong with their genetics, these pre-existing conditions like that's not that's not even remotely the same thing as saying do not actively directly kill somebody by ripping their limbs apart by, a suction, by suctioning them out of their mother's body into a vacuum i think that that's completely different mm -hmm. so when you say it would never be ethical to limit life coming into the world do you think it would be unethical to bring a child into the world if you knew for a fact that it would starve to death in the first two weeks because you don't have food to feed it or the mother what do you mean what part of that didn't you understand? So you're asking me if, would it be ethical for you as a mother to give birth? Yeah, let's say that you knew for a fact that you wouldn't be able to feed a child for two weeks coming into the world. Would it be ethical for you to bring that child into life knowing that it's gonna to starve to death in two weeks? As opposed to, I mean, at that point, you are close to giving birth if you know that somehow. So you would, be going into a late-term abortion procedure, which would involve injecting that child with um, potassium chloride, which is the same chemical we execute death row inmates with, by the way, and it's incredibly painful, and then ripping that child apart limb by limb, right, with with no no anesthetics, like nothing, nothing numbing the pain for that child. That child can absolutely feel that pain, and it's excruciating. You think that that would be a better solution? Nope. Because that's what we're talking about here, nope. right? That's, that's not what, what I that's asked. Literally about. not what I asked yeah. at all. It's literally not what we're talking about. I asked a really simple question. I said, would it be ethical to bring a child into this world knowing that you couldn't feed it? The alternative might be, for instance, not getting pregnant. I'm challenging would, you because one of the statements you gave be, was that it's not better, ethical to limit be life. Better. Let me, real quick. The reason why I'm providing this challenge is because I know that a lot of people like to wield around the word eugenics as some scary thing, um, but I'm not gonna get scared off just because you're screaming eugenics at me. So my question is, and I'll repeat it, is would it be ethical to bring a child into the world knowing that it could starve to death in two weeks because you don't have the food to feed it? I'm challenging your idea that it's never it ethical to limit better, life coming to the world. It yeah. would be better to get to not get pregnant if you knew that you couldn't provide for a child okay. but i don't think that's a, i don't think that that's a reason to murder that child because cool. what we're talking about like abortion we're not talking is about not murder at all a, not even close well, to that we're not even talking about abortion right, right now yeah. no we're not even yes, talking about are. abortion so, right now i just i'm challenging your statement you abortion. said you said that you didn't like this eugenics idea that it's ethical to limit life coming into the world that because was, you wrote, were literally talking about uh -huh. whether or not we should implement a eugenics program where the government tells people with disabilities and chronic conditions that they shouldn't try to have children because those children might have a higher chance of dying and that is eugenics destiny and i don't appreciate you saying that i'm using that word in a way to like i'm trying to scare you or something that's literally what you are describing so let's be very clear about what we're talking about right now you are describing eugenics and i'm telling you that eugenics is wrong that's I fine understand. that you believe that but a well, lot of people i don't people understand are gonna... why you're comparing uh-huh not telling people who might give a genetic condition to their child that limits that child's life i don't understand why you're comparing mm -hmm. people who have chronic conditions having children to women giving birth, knowing their baby's gonna starve to death in a week. And I don't see what any of this has to do with the direct murder of human beings, which is what abortion is. Gotcha, okay. So typically if you're having a discussion around a really complicated moral issue, usually you're trying to go piece by piece to figure out what the other person's stated position is, right? You said a lot of things that I don't think you agree with, and that's what I'm testing. So for instance, one of the things you said was it's never ethical to limit life coming into the world, and I challenged you on that, and it seems like you agree that there might be cases where it's ethical to limit life coming into the world. So since we agree that it is ethical, now it's a matter of finding out when it's ethical and when it's not. I'm just testing because a lot of the times when I have debates with people over moral issues, they will try to steamroll with like five or 10 different moral statements, but when you start to break those apart individually, they don't actually feel that strongly about them. They just kind of hope that you take all five or 10 of them at once and assume that you have an overwhelming amount of evidence for your position. So that's why I'm asking. I can assure you that I do feel very strongly about eugenics, Stephen. Right. That's so do you think that eugenics is always wrong? What do you mean by eugenics? Because well, what do you mean by like eugenics? Well, tell I me what you like mean by I'm, eugenics. What, Go ahead. What I'm saying, I feel like what I'm saying, what I'm talking about eugenics might be different from what you mean when you're talking about eugenics because you seem to agree with it. So tell me, what do you think eugenics means? Um, do you want me to give my definition first? Or do you want to give your definition? 
I'm asking you for your definition. On my definition, on the broadest level, eugenics seems to be doing something to try to encourage or discourage certain types of people from reproducing, like a very, very broad sense. Fine, let's, let's work with that definition. Okay, do you think it's always wrong to discourage certain types of people from having children or from having certain children born? It depends what you mean by discourage. If, you, if you're talking about the government coming in and telling people who can and cannot have children, I think that is wrong. Sure, okay, so we're not talking about um, the government right now. Let's just talk morally. Do you think that it no, might- No, I'm, uh -huh. I'm not interested in having a conversation about my personal feelings about these things. I'm talking about what I think the government should be allowed to do about these things. Okay, but what is law and government policy if not downstream from our personal ethical convictions? That's literally where law and policy comes from. I mean, there is a difference between what I think might be moral or ethical and what the government is allowed to do with that, right? Sure, but I generally think that your prescription here is gonna follow from your moral or ethical points. I'm just curious on your individual moral or ethical idea because you said eugenics is always wrong. You didn't say it should be um, illegal or outlawed or it shouldn't be government enforced. You said it's wrong. So I'm just curious if you actually believe that. Using my definition, definition of eugenics, which mm -hmm. is directly tied to governments going out of their way to fund and to facilitate eugenics programs, because that's how eugenics has functioned, right, in modern history. The government has funded these programs and they have encouraged these programs. I wanna be really clear right now that I think the government having eugenics programs is wrong. And I hope that you would agree with me. Do you, th I, well, it depends on how you define eugenics. How do you define eugenics? We're working with your definition. Okay, so, so uh, then I would say, I don't, no, morality, I don't think it's always wrong then. No, I don't. Okay, why? Uh, because there might be certain types of children that you wanna avoid bringing into the world for a variety of reasons. Um, like for instance, um, I think in I think in a lot of European countries, I could be wrong, I thought this was in Scandinavia, um, you can test in the womb for if a child might have Down syndrome. And some people might prefer to abort those children rather than carry them to term and then go through that in life. I think that if you're able to identify that at an incredibly early age, um, I don't think an abortion there would necessarily be a bad thing. I think that might be an ethical form of eugenics perhaps. You think it's ethical to kill children with Down syndrome before they are born, even though Down syndrome is not like a life limiting condition. Like it's not going to threaten your physical health to have Down syndrome. No, it's but it just destroys and degrades the quality of life of every single person around you. And you're saying that we get to decide that for that person. Um, this, well, I mean, that, I mean, I can only do it statistically speaking. Like, but I'm sure there might be some people that are really happy to have a Down syndrome child, but. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of activists who have Down syndrome who are talking about the situations in these countries right now where Iceland, there's nobody with Down syndrome in Iceland. Like, no new baby is being born with Down syndrome because they all get aborted. And these people have come out and said that it's wrong to kill somebody and to decide for them that it's, it's better to be dead than to have Down syndrome. I think that's a bad statement. Would you agree with me? That it's, that, say that again? That it's better to be dead than to have Down syndrome? Do you think that's a fair statement? Well, no, we're not talking about whether you should be dead. We're talking about whether you because should Because that's be... what an abortion does. Abortions kill Oh, I'm sorry. People. I thought I was going to get it to finish not... my statement. My bad. The question wasn't yeah. whether or not you're dead. The question is whether or not you um, are ever alive, right? So it might be the case, for instance... That's what we're talking about. Well, I'm just... I'm, I'm testing your principles on this. We Again, we don't even necessarily have to be talking about... Um, we don't necessarily have to be talking about abortion. We could be talking about preventing people who have Down syndrome or a high likelihood of giving birth to death to kids from having children. That might be the case. So there might be some neurodegenerative diseases that people maybe should avoid having children with, maybe. Okay. Well, I'm interested in talking about abortion because it's what I talk about. That's what I do. So you think it's better because an abortion kills a fetus. Mm -hmm. A successful abortion always kills a fetus. That's, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. You think that it's better to kill somebody than for them to have Down syndrome. We're what, not talking okay. about not conceiving that child. Yeah. What? Okay. <sighs> Fuck. This is, I'm being stupid right now. How old are you again? I'm 19. Okay. What is your goal in this conversation? I don't know. You asked me to talk to you. Okay, sure. But I'm trying to engage you with our brains, having a dialogue back and forth to figure out what we believe, where we stand, and then to move the conversation forward. But you understand that like when you say things like, oh, so you think it's okay to kill a baby and you just wanna murder all babies and you think when you murder a baby that that's okay to kill a baby? Right, you're not actually like not engaging. That is you. exactly, I'm just you a that is exactly, no, 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 it's not. You're not asking, asking me a question. Questions. You're, not, you're not even remotely attempting to engage with what I'm saying. You think that if yes, you just I keep am. hammering me with like the same statements, you're probably just screeching outside of people or you're holding your signs that that's somehow a way of like winning the conversation, which is fine. If you wanna talk about what you can, um, it's just boring for me. But I mean like, that's cool if you want. Um, 
so here's a question. So you mentioned- Would you condescend harder? Like, do you think it would be physically possible for you to condescend harder to me? When you question ask me that questions- you are some kind of political debater, right? That's what you do. You're okay. like 30 something, you're a political debater, that's your job. Mm -hmm. If you are not prepared for a conversation like that, that's fine. We can have a talk about how my day's been. I don't care. But I'm here to get some answers from you about what you've been talking about recently. And yeah, I'm, I'm not here to have baby sweet time talk with you. That's not what we're doing. I'm under that impression. But if, if you're more comfortable, if I have a soft voice, if I talk like a good woman, then I'm with that. But I don't understand why you're acting like I'm screaming at you when I'm just asking you the questions that are related to the subject. I just love how similar the far left and the far right people are when it comes to their demeanors. That's very entertaining to me. You okay. think I'm far left or far right? <laughs> um, I, it's just, well, no, it's like any kid that's incredibly dogmatic and ideologically partisanly driven on some issue that you all kind of like speak the same, which is funny to me. Like oh, the, what, like you? The accusations of misogyny and like all the shit is very funny to me. Um, okay, so here's a question, okay. Let's say that a woman knows she has a 95% chance of miscarriage um, if she gets pregnant. Do you think it's ethical for a person like that to get pregnant, knowing that 19- We're not talking about whether or not it's ethical for somebody to get pregnant, like, that's not what I'm interested in discussing. I'm interested in whether or not you think it's okay to kill someone for having Down syndrome, and whether or not killing someone is better than a Down syndrome person, like, a person who has Down syndrome huh? existing. Like, you, you think so it's better to kill that person. Okay. This is why I'm saying you're not actually engaging in, in a conversation. Just answer the question, dude. I'm curious. Can you answer that for me? What do you think I'm going to say? I you asked me the question. Going to say. You I, don't know I, if I I'm going to say if it's okay are. or not to kill a person with Down syndrome. Because that's what you're arguing for with, with your position about Iceland's ratio of people who don't have Down syndrome. It's because they're all aborted. I just, I just, saying, I'm just, I just want to hear you. Yeah. So I'm just curious. Just guess, take a guess. What do you think my answer is going to be? Am I okay with killing people with Down syndrome? I can't tell you what you're going to say. I don't know who you are, Stephen. I would say probably not. Probably not. Yeah. So why is it okay to abort those people then? I we haven't even gotten to the abortion thing yet. Right now, we just we're, got to it. I feel like we just on. got to it. No, 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 so no, no, no. Talk about it. Right now, we're <laughs> literally asking because you said eugenics is always wrong. That was the statement that I wanted to fight on. But it sounds to me like you personally, you don't actually believe that eugenics is wrong. You think that all forms of abortion are wrong, and eugenics just. I so do think that eugenics is wrong. Operating under my definition of eugenics, understanding that eugenics is fundamentally tied to government intervention and people. Do you think eugenics is eugenics doesn't have to be tied races. to government intervention, right? It, it usually is, though, right? And the it, way it's usually, but by definition, it doesn't have to be, right? I think it is wrong for the government to tell Jewish people, uh, people who aren't white, people with disabilities, that they can't have children, right? I think that that's wrong, um, and I hope we can both agree on that. So sure, but I'm saying that, like, that like having like a society that encourages people with about. a society that encourages people with certain genetic abnormalities to not have children, you could argue that that is like a form of eugenics, right? Like, for instance, some people argue that abortion is a form of eugenics on black people because a lot of black babies, proportionally speaking, get aborted. But that's not like a government enforced program, right? I mean, abortion, the abortion industry is subsidized by the government. Yes, you could argue that. But I mean, wait, a subsidization really by the government, does that make it eugenics then? I mean, it's inherently connected to the government and the government is encouraging it. So I think that that would make it, yeah, more of a eugenics program if the government's directly doing it. Okay, so then is all form of abortion that gets any type of government support, is that all eugenics or? I mean, again, you have to deal with the other component of the definition of eugenics, which is limiting the amount of certain kinds of people who are born. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to talk specifically about abortion businesses that are funded and subsidized directly by the government who do abort a disproportionate amount of certain groups of people because they are deliberately planned to be in those neighborhoods and to reach out to those certain groups of people, then yes, you could argue that's a form of eugenics. I'm personally interested mm -hmm. in having a conversation about whether or not deciding not to have a baby because you're worried about giving it some genetic trait you have. I'm not interested in having a conversation about whether or not that's ethical, right? Because I think the far more interesting conversation is regarding the active mass murder of children right now, which is completely illegal in the United States. I think that's wrong. Sure, I, and I can understand that, but then my questions earlier around the miscarriage stuff was that there's also like a massive like death of some preventable miscarriage that's also being like the massive death of children. I think that if- 
if we do if we do agree, um, and like I said, I could go dig for more numbers, but right now what I'm saying is 25% of miscarriages are preventable. If it was the case that a ton, that millions of children across the United States were dying due to preventable things like not being fed, that that would be a thing that I would probably it would probably be like my number one list of priorities to address. That that there are 25% of children's deaths in the United States are easily preventable things. So if it was Again, the case that uh, an abortion is fed. murdering somebody or a miscarriage is the death of a child, if I say that 25% of those miscarriages are identifiable, that should be like your guys' next step because that's like the biggest loss of child life in the United States then. Again, it's not because they're not being fed, right? We just went over this. Those other I never said it wasn't because you're not being fed, but I'm saying it's because of preventable because causes. You literally just said of not being fed, right? So Well, no, no, I compared it to a starving saying. child, but I'm saying that like these are preventable in some way. Right, so it's not comparable to a starving child. That's what I'm trying to illustrate to you. So if we're talking about those other percentage of miscarriages, again, we're talking about things that, while theoretically are preventable, they're not really in any practical terms. Like women who have bifurcated uteruses, for example, getting pregnant, this is not really a preventable thing, unless we get the I'm not talking involved, about right? the ones that so aren't talking, preventable. I'm talking about the ones that are preventable. We're talk, the, the percentage that you listed includes those kinds of cases, right? So if we're talking no, about- No, it doesn't, no. Yes, it does. So if we're- No, okay. it says Steven, modifiable Steven, risk Steven, factors were- Stephen Kennedy. Please don't, hold on, you're triggering me. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> okay, <laughs> it says modifiable risk factors were alcohol consumption, lifting of over 20 kilograms daily, and night work. Those are the modifiable risk factors that they looked at in this Danish study. Um, I am far more concerned with the direct killing mm -hmm. of thousands, actually, millions of children in the United States, right? I'm, Why are you I'm more, more concerned, concerned about that than the miscarriages? Because, because, because directly killing someone, right, is I think much, much of a bigger issue than children dying from things that we maybe could possibly prevent, which are still a minority of miscarriages by far. And, oh. and I, th I think it's also important that this mass killing is not just happening, it's that it's legal. Right, so we're condoning it as a society. Okay, yes, so I then some degree of like, so that. then some degree of negligence that results in child death should be totally A-OK -okay in your society. No, I didn't just say that. That's not what I said. Why are you putting words in my mouth? Well, because that's what you're saying, that if 25% no, of miscarriages are saying. preventable, a miscarriage, because, because we should no actually, hold on, wait, 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 wait. We need to stop saying miscarriage. We need to say baby death, okay? Because that's really what you're talking about, right? So 25% of baby deaths in the United States that happen from miscarriages, do you think that's those are acceptable, all... that happen from negligence? So you can't interchange the term miscarriage with baby death, even though it is the death of a child. I have lost two children death to miscarriage. Death of a child I... is baby death, right? Well, yes, but it's not, it's a very specific kind of a baby death. death child, right? I agree, but there's some baby yeah. death that's just due to negligence or, yeah, preventable factors, right? You think that... We can call it infanticide so, so if you want, so, maybe. So but... argue, well, infanticide is a very specific legal term. That means the death of a child that was already born. Okay. Um, and in fact, infanticide is actually the killing of a child that was already born, not just the death of a child. Um, but if we're going to be specific, I think that you're... What I'm confused about is why you're assigning blame to these women inherently. Because it can happen due to negligence. To yeah, because it can happen due to but negligence. That's not, but that's not what that's not what that's not what negligence is, is it? It is. It, it is. If there's a modifiable risk factor that could increase the likelihood of you carrying a child to term, then you not following through on that would be the child dying due to negligence, the baby death. You think that a woman not happening to know that she has some kind of genetic issue that causes her to have a higher percentage of miscarriages and then having a miscarriage because of this thing that she didn't know about, you think that's negligence? The three controllable, modifiable risk factors here that I see are, um, are alcohol consumption, lifting over 20 kilograms daily, and night work. And this says that we estimate that by 25.2% of the miscarriages might be prevented by reduction of all these risk factors to low levels. So not consuming alcohol, not lifting more than 20 kilograms daily, and avoiding work at night. Those seem to be things that you probably, if you're gonna murder a child, you should probably be aware of these things, I would I imagine. I mean, it's illegal in a lot of states to drink while you're pregnant and to do drugs while you're pregnant. And if that's what we're talking about, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Well, no, 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 we're, we're not talking about making it illegal. We're talking about making aggressive steps to find women that are pregnant because some women might have sex and not know they're pregnant. So that you literally are creating a baby that could be negligently killed, essentially, by, by not being really aggressive and helping these women identify early pregnancies. Like, how, how would we do that? Um, I don't know. What's the earliest you can pee on a strip and find out? Isn't it like one week or two weeks after that's a missed not, period? Oh, okay. I was like, no, you can't know if you're one week pregnant. Oh, my oh, God. That's, yes, no. this is why so we let people to... finish their sentences. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure by one or two weeks after a missed period, I think the, the success rate is like 99% on like a take-home pregnancy test, isn't it? Yeah, so after you're six weeks pregnant. Uh-huh. 
Wait, is it after you're six weeks pregnant? Yeah. So okay. pregnancy is measured. Yeah. Sure. So then, I, so we should like really aggressively try to find these women, right, that are having sex. How? How? Why? What? What do you mean? Why? Hold like, on. Like, the, Let me just make a quick point. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to make a. Institutionalized. I understand. All I understand. I understand. Who are having sex. Sure. What are you so, talking about? I understand and. I like that you respond this way because I agree. It's a really goofy line of questioning, but I think the issue is that intuitively you know that your position is silly because if it was the case no, that a that was not my position. if it was the case that a zygote that a uh, fetus of one cell size if it was the case that that was a human being a living baby that was endowed with all these rights you wouldn't be so incredulous when you say things like oh, why would you try to find that out why would you even care but the reason why you're doing this is such a laughable concept to so try to save you're, you're a, really a six week old fetus shoehorn me. I'm not so shoehorning you anyway I'm just I'm telling you this is how you're reacting you're laughing because the Steven, concept of trying to Steven, save a Steven, Steven, please don't Steven. say that you're triggering me don't. Talk to me that way, okay? Steven, listen. First of all, a six-week fetus is not a single-cell organism. I don't know Wait, what's where your you name? went to school. I just told you my name at the beginning of this conversation. I don't fucking remember. It was a long time ago. My name is Ayala. Ayala? Yes. Jesus Christ. Okay. I. It's Hebrew. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> A six-week fetus is not the size of a single cell. That really? is not accurate. Do you think that I don't know that? Well, you just seem to get those two things conflated, so I wanted to clarify. How did people. I get those two things conflated? Go ahead and tell me. You said preventing the deaths of six-week fetuses, and then you said uh, embryo that's the size of like a single cell or something like that. And that's just not, that's that's not what we're talking your about. Your position the is that you but think that a... Wait, wait. Your position is you think a single-celled... Again, gonna, you keep you, saying your position. You don't know what my position is, oh, right? Oh, okay. So let me tell wait, you wait, what tell it me, is. tell me. When when does the fetus become endowed with the rights to human life? Tell me. Go ahead. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hanging. Let's walk this back for like ten minutes ago. Okay, e i o l a. Tell me. You keep i o l a. You keep telling me that I have this position and mm -hmm. that I know that my logic is silly and that's why I'm laughing, mm -hmm. Destiny. It's your logic that you are presenting me with and projecting onto me. I sure. never said these things. Okay, I don't you know. Are, Maybe you don't you, think moment of conception. You, yeah, so tell me. Go ahead. You are arguing mm -hmm. that I believe something that you are projecting onto me. Mm -hmm. I want to be very clear. I have not agreed that we should put... I understand. Women... women heck, no, you don't understand, so I'm going to explain it to you. I'm just asking you. Have, you. you are, Please, Lale Lale Lo, tell me. When does when does when do you think that like a baby is like a baby? When is it worth protecting? At what stage in conception I or gestation? I think life does begin at conception, but I don't think that that means that we should put women who are pregnant in the hospital mm -hmm. and and monitor their health and stop them from maybe having a miscarriage because it's not something we do for born people, right? That's no, not, it that's is. Not a, that's no, no, not no, 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 care. You, it it's is. Actually it not. is. It's it actually is. It, it actually it super is. As a, super as a father of a son, yes, okay, I can tell you, I have experience. If your child, when they come out of the womb, if there are any health issues, then they will keep that child in the hospital for a little bit to monitor them to make sure that they're safe. Because they would not send home- But we don't home. keep all children in the hospital. I didn't say we keep all children, but my understanding is there aren't a lot of children that have a 25% chance of being instantly fucking destroyed when they're born. But if there was a condition like that, you probably would keep all those children in the hospital. Would you agree? Are you, so, okay. Are you arguing that we keep all pregnant women in the hospital or just pregnant women that might have some of these pre-existing conditions that I'm saying that them to uh, yeah, I'm saying that in the very beginning stages after you have sex, we should probably be taking really aggressive steps to identify people that are pregnant if you believe that baby death is happening if they have a preventable miscarriage. And you're defining that as like drinking or and this in this one study danish study well you can find 20 kilograms of stuff to lift outside of the gym believe it or not but it seemed like the modifiable risk factors were alcohol consumption lifting of over 20 kilograms daily and night work and you're arguing that we keep according to, to what you think is my logic mm -hmm. you're arguing that if i actually gave a shit about miscarried babies like my own yep we would we would put all of those women in the hospital we would identify them somehow. God mm -hmm. only knows how. Mm -hmm. They would know that they were pregnant somehow. God mm -hmm. only knows how. Mm -hmm. And we would we would keep them in the hospital to make sure they didn't have a miscarriage. That's what you I, think I believe. Well, I'm saying that your logic commits you to that position. Now I agree that it's no, funny. It I think that's I think that's funny, 
but it's it's only funny because how ridiculous the notion is that we're doing so much effort to protect like a one or two week old thing. I agree that it's funny, but you don't understand the reason why you're laughing is because intuitively you know that's funny as well. The reason I'm laughing is because you're trying to impose a position on me that is not aligned with my logic and but inherently doesn't make sense in line with my logic, actually. Okay. And I don't think that you quite understand what my logic is. Okay. And that's why can I, I tried to talk to okay, you about Okay, here, can abortion. I? Oh, sure, sure. Can, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I, how about let's, you about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down your logic, and then you tell me where I'm making a mistake. Okay, ready? Destiny, do you want to talk about abortion or not? Because this whole time you've been trying to sidestep the issue, even when I specifically brought it up, and you said you didn't want to talk about abortion with me. That's my job, right? I talk about abortion. And if you're not comfortable having that conversation about why you think it's okay to kill people who have Down syndrome, I, that's fine. That's well, fine. I never said we should kill people without, with Down syndrome, right? Oh, okay, then what did you say? Um, I said that selecting to have children are not based on Down syndrome is a form of eugenics that I think a lot of people are probably okay with. And the idea that eugenics bad, that's not something you can just throw out in the middle of an argument to try to win like brownie points with an audience if you're actually gonna be critically analyzing the position. So, first of all, I am analyzing your position critically. It's a bad one. Second of all, I don't really care about winning brownie points with your audience because they're not going to like me anyway. Third of all, please answer the question then. Do you think that it's morally acceptable to abort babies for having Down syndrome? M mind you, that we do not find out very early in pregnancy that babies have Down syndrome, right? Um, I mean, I would say that before 20 weeks, you can have an abortion, sure. But, pri uh, but past 20 weeks, um, I'm, I don't think so. I think I'm on board with that. But that's been my position since the beginning, right? When do you think babies are diagnosed with Down syndrome in the womb? Um, I mean, it depends on how invasive the procedure is, but I'm pretty sure you can know that around like 10 to 15 weeks. You can know it before the 20 week mark. It can be performed as early as 11 to 14 weeks of pregnancy, but mm -hmm. often it's detected about 15 to 22 weeks of pregnancy. You added that too. I'm reading the exact same thing you're reading. It says between 15 and 20 weeks. Nice try though, Elielio. Okay, I no, see what says, you're reading. I'm on, I'm on Alberta and I don't think we have the same thing pulled up. It's done between 15 and 22 weeks of pregnancy. That's exactly what it says. Okay, I saw the 11 to 14 weeks with the first trimester ultrasound and blood test. Screening can also be performed between 15 and 20 weeks by a blood test, but so it seems like it can be easily performed before 20 weeks. I mean, it can be, but it's usually detected about 20, 22 weeks in pregnancy. Uh, okay, could be. Well, then because, we would screen um, earlier you because you probably want to kill a baby, right? Okay. Do you think it's, it's, so you think it's morally okay to kill a baby that has Down syndrome so they do not have to live with Down syndrome? I don't think it's okay to ever kill babies, no. Oh, okay. Do you think it's okay to abort a baby? I don't think it's okay to abort missing. a baby. You mean have an abortion of like a fetus before 20 weeks? I think you can abort a fetus before 20 weeks for literally... Sure, um, let's use the Latin term, which also means little baby. Fine, whatever makes you more comfortable. Let's oh, use euphemism. Well, if you want to do the okay etymology argument that you want to win. Yeah, I think having an abortion before 20 weeks, I think, is generally okay. Yeah. Okay, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So where do we stop with that? Uh, 20 weeks. No, I mean, where do, where do we draw the line? Like with, with this eugenics line of argument like do you think oh, it's for okay? eugenics line of argument i would say well here do you want to take the really funny guesses first do you want to say we should abort all black people or all indian people which you can do your straw man and then i can tell you what my position is so i don't want to short circuit I'm, I'm, ask, I'm asking you what your position is i don't want to put words in your mouth oh okay because it sounded like you were just ready to do it but um yeah i would say that um avoiding for things that are like developmentally uh, would severely impact the life of the child or the life of people around it. That's probably an okay type of eugenics to uh, perform in society. Eugenics that so give revolve. Give me some examples. Um, sure. I think there's a disease called Tay Sachs where like children live to the like fucking five years old. I think um, there is. Um, Itch, itch it queen tycosis. I can't even fucking pronounce it, but there's one where like the keratin is hardened of the baby's skin and the entire fucking baby's body is hardened. I don't know if those live generally past like a year or two. Uh, I'm sure there's a million other like genetic abnormalities that I don't know about that like have the child dying with before like five years of life. Um, there's like a ton of different things like that. But like, yeah, I would say that in that case, because you're so developmentally far, it's probably okay. I would say that the types of abortions where you're trying to choose between features, aesthetic features are probably not okay. For the same reason, I'd probably um, oppose like certain types of genetic modifications done to uh, fertilized eggs, because I think that's probably not okay that we're like designing babies for society to have blue eyes, brown eyes, white skin, whatever. But yeah, that's my general position on that. Okay, so you're, that's interesting though, because Down syndrome does not affect like the physical health of the people who have it. It's it's just 
Hold on, can you a, say a that one more time? Mental... Wait, 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 wait. Before I Google, because I know you're wrong in 50 million ways. Can you say that again? You don't think people well, with Down, Down syndrome don't like have- a, People who have Down syndrome are not dying when they're five years old of Down syndrome. I didn't like, say they're dying when they're about. five years well, old. Well, you're comparing it to like these other things where children die very young. And, and you're saying that Down no, syndrome you hold feel on, is hold on, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't say you had to die very young. I'm just saying things that have a dramatically negative impact on your health and your development. Down syndrome is one of those things and the people around you. Down syndrome is definitely one of those things. I think their okay, life expectancy so is like 20 years lower than average. They've got all sorts of other complications, health problems that arise with Down syndrome too. Like, I'm pretty sure people with Down syndrome have like major health problems um, for, for a lot of their life, depending on, I guess, the other issues they suffer. But. I can go look up all those side effects. Then. I'll okay. give you another example. Yes, That's fine. Go ahead. So my fiance was mm -hmm. born with a severe heart condition. Okay. And he had to have multiple major open heart surgeries before he turned 13. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would have been okay for, if we had the technology to detect that in the womb, to have killed him in the womb because he would have to have those surgeries, even though he's perfectly healthy now? Do you, do you think that would have been okay? Before 20 weeks? Sure. Yeah. I'm interested in why you draw the line at 20 weeks. Uh, well, I'm sure you saw my abortion debate, but that's the- I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched like a clip. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Uh, it's expected. You're 19. Uh, I would say I that- I just didn't know who you were, so I didn't really care that much. <laughs> oh, you cared enough to tweet about me uh, enough that I saw it, so. That's um, my job. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know if you get paid for that, but all right. I actually do. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't believe you, but okay. Um, the, I get paid uh, by pal. The, um, I typically say that when the conscious experience begins to develop, that that's the thing that we ought to protect, the conscious experience that somebody's having. You literally have you, my, I, my video you, thumbnail is literally your profile picture on Twitter. How are you saying you don't know who I, I know. am? I know. I actually didn't know who you were whenever you made that video, and I became vaguely aware of who you are because one of my friends reached out and said that Destiny made a video saying that you debated really good, and I thought that your edit of me was really funny. Also. Don't think that I didn't notice there's a Star of David in between my eyebrows. I thought that was a very nice touch. Um, <laughs> Wait, let's is see it? Here. Wait, really? There is. Zoom in on it. There's a Star of David in between my eyebrows in that picture. That's August. If no, August, there's no way you did that, right? Um, okay, sorry. Anyway, go ahead. Or, or that was That's my position on abortion. Okay. Oh, find the conscious experience. Like, what does that mean to you? Um, well, it seems to be the case that when there is some amount of brain activity, there's an emergent phenomenon in human beings where we tend to have some subjective conscious experience where we're aware of ourselves and we're aware of the world. And that seems to require the communication of like different parts of the brain, the development of like certain brain structures in order for that to happen. So you mean just like conscious awakeness or like conscious awareness? Um, I don't think this is a star of David. <laughs> nice. Totally. Star of David, it totally is. It looks like an artifact from the fiery like shit that's in your eyes. It's 100% a Star of David. It is, I'll bet my life it is not. But I'll no. bet my life it is. It was put there by Hashem, I believe that. <laughs> okay. Um, it's an artifact for the eye thing, Dustin. Yeah, I figured. Um, sorry, so, okay, what was your question between, again? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between being awake and being like, sentient like consciously aware right True. so like mm -hmm. newborns for example peter singer by the way is like a renowned debater and he's very pro-abortion and he's famously pro-infanticide because he thinks that newborns are not really that distinguishable from um, other unborn children because they don't have sentience right like they don't have mm -hmm. conscious yeah, I'm aware. awareness they're, they're just awake like mm -hmm. their eyes are open um so i guess <laughs> I guess I'm just trying to figure out like what exactly you mean by like consciousness when you say that. Uh, it seems that humans have an experience where there is a subjective feeling about what it's like to be something. So I'm having some subjective conscious experience right now. The other humans I talk to have some subjective conscious experience. That awareness comes from the communication of different parts of our brain and our and the like the front part of our brain. Okay, so and. and I'm assuming that you know that consciousness is like an ever developing thing, especially in young children, like they're still developing their consciousness and throughout your early life, that is a continuous thing. Like it's not something that you would develop at once and you just have it. Like it's something that's consistently developing. I'm sure that you know that. Um, sure it might be, yeah. Yes, it is. So like you don't, 
Yeah, some degree of self-awareness of passing like the red dot test or whatever, where you shine a laser beam on somebody's head and or draw something and see if they recognize it in a mirror, et cetera. Like these are different aspects that develop as you age, yeah? Yeah, like newborns don't understand they're a different entity from their mother. Okay. So how would you say that newborns are really any different than, I guess, 19 week babies? Well, because the development of that conscious process seems to start at around 20 to 24 weeks or 24 to 28 weeks when the parts of the brain necessary for that emergent conscious to appear begin to communicate with each other. So you're just worried about when it starts. Yep. You're not worried about, it's, it's just really interesting to me because like there's not much of a like really tangible difference in between like a 19 week baby in utero and a like fresh out of the womb newborn in terms of their understanding of the world around them. There isn't. I'm not going by understanding of the world around them. I'm going well, by that's developing. What consciousness is. No, I don't think so. I think there's plenty of people that are conscious with a very poor understanding of the world around them. But no, I would say it's like that subjective experience of knowing what it's like to be something. That 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 I, I don't know how else you could put it into words as hard as a subjective conscious experience to describe what experience I'm having. But newborns have like no subjective conscious experience, even though they have that. They, they have those brain waves and they have the the parts of the brain that are starting to develop those things. Like compared to a five year old, for example, their consciousness is horribly poorly developed. And like when you're comparing that to a 19 week baby in utero, there's actually not much of a, a difference in between their consciousness capacity. Okay. Well, uh, people that look developmentally at embryos seem to disagree with you. So I don't know what you want me to say about that. Well, I'm asking like what. <laughs> There, there are parts of the brain that begin communicating with each other that we believe are responsible for the emergent phenomenon of consciousness anywhere from 20 to 24 weeks. That seems to be where the research is right now. That's what I've seen. I've also seen 24 to 28 weeks, but since the risk here is murdering a baby if we're wrong, you should probably err on the set of caution. I'd say around 20 weeks is probably where the cutoff should be. Well, yeah, and like again, I agree those things begin developing, mm -hmm. give or take, at about that age. But even like right before, so like 19 weeks we're, we're drawing that line, Mm -hmm. It's not that much different from a newborn again, and I just I Seems don't to be understand. Pretty different, yeah, I think so. It's it's not like with the, the cognitive capacity of a newborn is not that indifferent to. I'm not talking about the itself, cognitive capacity in anything. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the capacity for conscious awareness. There you go. Like, however yep. you want to phrase it. Yeah. Well, you that's don't really a much seem different to have, thing, like, a right? Very firm grasp of your definition of this consciousness. I think anyway. my, my grasp so, is decent, but like you're asking me to like define the conscious experience is like the hardest question of like all of fucking science, of <laughs> arguably the universe. It's pretty easy to me. I mean, if you're willing to bet people's lives on it. Then oh, it really? Be then go ahead and easy. tell me what do you? How would you define consciousness? I, I already defined it for you. Oh, do that again. I'm sorry. I must have. There's missed, different missed kinds of consciousness. There's oh. different kinds of consciousness. There's uh -huh. a difference between someone being consciously awake mm -hmm. and someone having the capacity for conscious awareness. True, but so what does somebody, it mean for somebody, somebody to be awake? Tell me, since you have this all figured out, I would love a better definition. So Go ahead. somebody who's sleeping is not consciously awake. They're not like going through experiencing the world True, around them. True, but when you say awake, what is it like to be awake? Please tell me this. I want you to solve so, this problem for me. Yes. I'm just asking you. No, no, I'm asking you. You, you said you gave me a definition. I want a definition. You. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. No, I'm, I'm asking you. you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. No, I am asking you. What does it mean Steven. when you're conscious? Alia. Ayala. Okay, so what does it mean when you're conscious? Tell me what that feeling is. What does that mean? Like you're conscious right now. I'm not asking you to define a feeling. I'm not interested in talking about feelings. That's not what we're here to do. Well, technically, I'm talking if about we're talking about subjective conscious experience, it's literally what it feels like to be objectively, something. Objectively, objectively, and scientifically, uh -huh. there is not a, a significant difference between the conscious capacity of a 19-week baby in the womb mm -hmm. versus a, I don't know, premature even newborn baby. Like there's, there's really not. Oh. They're not experiencing the world in a very different way. They don't know they're different from their mother. They they act on instinct. They don't they don't act on their feelings towards other people. First of all, like I they, don't agree with you when you say that. They don't know what it means to be different from their mother. Can you explain more? They what you literally mean to say don't. That? So, and this is a very well known thing amongst women who talk about pregnancy pretty often, like I do. Newborn babies freak out crazy bad when they're away from their mother, not just because they know that it's bad to be away from their mother like instinctually because they need resources from her, but it's because they don't understand that they are a separate person from their mother. Okay, that is, studies on uh, that is not true. <laughs> what yes, it is. Yes, no, it is. No, newborn babies not. don't know that they're a different part from their mother okay, let me let me ask. I'm sorry. inside of her. When you say newborn, what does that mean? Newborn is a common designation for infants. It's a no, but I'm at, cause like, was, like you can hold a baby that's like six weeks old, two months old, away from the mom, and he's not gonna freak out. Okay, so let's 
I don't know, let's use a very simple definition of newborn. Like a baby that was literally, quite literally just born. Like a baby okay, that was sure. just inside quite of Quite literally just born? I can buy that. that. Okay, sure. That might be the case. Sure. I don't know I if mean, it's true or not, but I get granted. If you, you want, want to. Me to Google but it also, this for I don't you. think it has any bearing in the argument either. I don't know that that means that they're not conscious. They probably. I'm just trying to ask you, like, what are you talking about? Like, why do you think that a 19 week baby and a, a newborn mm -hmm. child are significantly different in their conscious capacity when a because newborn Because there's a significant difference isn't. in the development of the brain parts that are required to deploy a conscious experience. The development de to difference between a 19 week old child and a born baby is significantly different. I thought we were just talking about a subjective conscious experience, whatever that means. Are oh, we talking I'm about sorry. science? I are didn't we talking have... about brain waves? Are we talking well, about subjective conscious You know conscious what? Experiences? When it comes to science, believe it or not, even the best scientists in the world don't have a have not solved the hard problem of consciousness yet. So I'm sorry that I can't give you the exact definition that you're looking for, but Again, I think if you're betting people's lives on the definition mm -hmm. of consciousness, like you should probably have a better answer than I don't know, um, it has something to do with brain waves, it's a subjective experience, I can't define it for you. Don't we do that right now to figure out if people are dead or not? No. <laughs> okay, how do we how do we how do we decide when somebody's dead? When someone's brain dead, but that's a completely different Wait, 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 wait. Brain well, dead. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Why does the brain death thing matter? Than deciding whether or not someone has become alive. Sure. There is well, a no, okay. between coming well, sure. alive and dying. Sure, let's just focus on that part though. Why would brain death be the thing that matters to figure out if a person's dead mm. or not? <laughs> no, why did she leave? It, it glitched. She's coming back. She's coming back. Don't worry, I know she's coming back. Hold on. Hold up. Discord crashed for me. I think I have like an, I think I have a trigger now around women saying my name. Steven, Steven, Steven. Like I think it actually triggers the f out of me. I'm going to a fight or flight. This is the second crip you've talked to in as many days. One year as a brother's when you're a lot of disgusting for one year baby conceived in rape, one year later I'm proud of you. How is this a crip? What part about this makes it a crip? Hello? Hmm. Oh, hello? I don't know what happened. Discord's been having a lot of issues today, don't worry. Um. Okay. So I'm just curious, why do you think brain death is an important way to figure out if somebody's dead or not? When somebody is brain dead, they're not going to regain consciousness. Okay. Well, but I'm saying Nobody has ever been brain dead and then Sure. So when you say dead. they're not gonna regain consciousness, is that then why they're dead? So knowing they're not going to regain consciousness mm -hmm. means that their body will never again be able to support itself um they will never be able to live without the support of a machine again and they're never going to experience the world again um and understand the concept of their own existence okay so um 
Do you think that if a person could be live a totally healthy life, but they'd have to be on bypass their whole life? That's a person that can't support themselves without being hooked up a machine, and they can't live without the sweat of a machine. Should that person be allowed to be killed? What did you say? If a person can't support themselves with their body, like say they have kidney failure and they need to be on dialysis forever, should that person be killable since they can't live without no, the sweat of a machine? No, I think the difference is that um, when somebody is brain dead, it's that their entire bodily system, including their brain mm -hmm. no longer has it's like none of it's functioning true. right and so to be clear real that. quick that's not even remotely close to being true i can't believe that you don't know that that's a little shocking to me um, i'm reading it off of the nhs website right now okay a person's body can be kept alive for quite a while despite the fact that they might be like comatose right so I'm reading this off of the NHS website, and it is saying, a person who is brain dead is legally confirmed as dead because they have no chance of recovery, mm -hmm. and their body is unable to survive without artificial life support. Like their entire body cannot survive without artificial life support. That's because they the can't. NHS that's because they can't eat or drink. <laughs> you you need those things to survive, right? I don't really understand how this is related to abortion. Why do you have to? Well, you're so obsessed with relating it to abortion. I'm just trying to figure out when you think somebody's dead. I'm just obsessed with relating things to abortion because I was mm -hmm. under the impression that that's what we're talking about, and that's what I'm interested in talking about. Okay, that's abortion what I do. and I when talk about abortion. That's great. Abortion and when life starts are some of the most difficult questions to answer philosophically. Almost anything. I mean, philosophically, sure, but like scientifically, not really. Um, scientifically, and when someone's dead and when someone's alive are also different things. Yeah. So. so science doesn't answer any of these questions. These are questions of moral philosophy. As science science has, answers when someone is alive. Yes, science answers when an organism has begun its life. Science um, can science point to, be able to answer the value. Yeah, science science not be able to answer the value of that person or that yeah, organism to uh, us. But science can tell you when someone is alive. That is true. Si science can point to like metabolic activity. Okay, the idea of like what does it mean to be alive or dead? These are normative claims that come way before any scientific process. Science is not gonna give us the answer to abortion ever. It can inform us based on our values, but it can't tell us when is a person a person or when is a person alive or dead. So Sure, personhood is philosophical, but like human life is not a philosophical concept. It's of a course it is. One. No, it's super philosophical. <laughs> okay. If I chop your arm off and I put it on a desk, that's not a human life, is it? Because it's taking a part of an organism and removing it from sure i know but, I'm, but it's, it's human yeah it's human it's got dna it might even have a little bit of metabolic activity while the blood's still there but i'm just saying that like this idea of like what is a human person what is a life drawing the difference between like some humans and others and blah 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 like these are all like kind of philosophical things right which is no, fine. the it concept doesn't... of what a whole organism is is 100 percent a scientific it's not concept. it's no it's not it's yeah, yeah the concept of what an entire organism is versus a part of an organism is completely scientific so yes it is Okay. When you get when you get to when you get to college, take something called philosophy of science. Okay, it'll open your eyes to the world I'm, around you. All right. I am in college, and I I promise you that I understand the difference between philosophy and biology, and it's a it's a pretty easy answer. It's absolutely it is probably one of the on most. Is the it whole is person. absolutely not an easy answer. Things like ontology have huge ramifications in the field of science. Um, and it is absolutely questions that are not going to be answered by looking under a microscope or running a particular test. Um, you think we can't answer why someone's arm is not a whole person easily? Scientifically? I think I can answer that pretty fucking easily. You can do yeah, it. No. Scientifically. Okay. Um, all right. I understand and recognize that that is your position. That's fine. Um, my question is, so going back. So if you've got a person in a coma and you know they're not going to wake up again, but their body can be kept alive indefinitely on machines, why is it okay to pull the plug? I'm against euthanasia, so. So you would keep comatose people that are never going to wake up. You'd keep their bodies alive indefinitely until the body runs out of time. Depends what you mean by, I mean... Uh -oh. I just don't understand, like, what... You, when you keep saying, what does that do with abortion? Yeah, it's because you realize that, like, you're on faulty ground it's now. It's not because I realize that I'm wrong. It's because you're trying to exhaust me with running in circles on these, like, mm -hmm. completely... Like, I mean, euthanasia is an issue related to abortion, but it's we're not... We're not even at euthanasia right now. I mean, yeah, we're getting into that territory. And nope, not I even just, close. I just, I, just, I just don't understand what 
like why won't you just talk to me about abortion like why what are what are you do you think that if you're going to put yourself in the position of telling other people how to live their lives and you're going to celebrate the overturning of protective legislation in the united states for people that are trying to have a medical procedure don't you think people that you owe it don't you think okay, that you I owe it don't you think that, that you owe it to it? them yeah, and yourself to understand these arguments a little bit better than what you write on your signs uh, i don't think that killing a baby is the same thing as cutting someone's arm off i like yeah, i don't know that's what, great I, what the, the emotional about. appeals and the bad logic are fine but for you to sit here and be like i'm tired i'm exhausted me? when you're literally tweeting out celebrating the overturning of roe v wade it seems to me okay. like you would probably so do to have, if this is what you do if you do abortion debates, you should probably know these arguments, right? You You're owe not it. even talking about abortion, dude. Like, what are you going on about? Trying to figure out when something is dead could be instructed to figure out when it's out. alive. Like, what are you on about, dude? Like, what are you, do you want to let me finish a sentence? The brain is shut down. down so this is like, like the defender wanna, mode why do you want to talk because about abortion you know, is like a part of her life. She is incapable of like having the conversation. That's where we're at right now. All you've been doing this whole time is condescending based off of like a position that you have no... Mm -hmm. You have no bearing to condescend from. Yeah. Like, I don't understand this whole time. You've been like, how old are you? You don't know what you're talking about. I'm surprised you don't know this. Like, dude. I'm surprised you I thought that a brain dead person means the whole body shuts down. And you won't even talk to me about you're the one that told me to message you. Hold on. I'm sorry. You told me. You said on Twitter. Arm off or hospitalizing pregnant women. Let's yep. just talk about abortion. You told me on Twitter to dm you okay so i dm'd you i did not tell you on twitter to dm you i said that if you wanted to have a conversation with me that you could dm me <laughs> okay um I, well so i can only talk about abortion so t c give me the what i'm interested in talking about like I give me the ra well you, what you want to do is you want to preach so okay so give me the rails for where you want this conversation to go go for it I don't want to preach to you. I want to know what you want to talk to me about. I already like, told you. I think I, that I think that conscious experiences are what are worth protecting. When we talk about what a person is, when we talk about pain and suffering, when we talk about people that ought to be protected, that are alive and not dead, we're usually talking about people that are having subjective conscious experiences. Those are the things that we care about more than anything else. Okay, Destiny, so. Well, fine, why'd I get whatever. downgraded from Steven? Fine, whatever. I know, it's just, it's so much more fun to call you Steven. Like, I, I don't like using these dumb little pseudonyms that we make up for ourselves, like, you okay. have a real name. Um, <laughs> because I, I wanna also, like, remind ourselves that you are an adult, ma'am. Um, so, if we wanna talk about Wait, what does that have to do with it? As, Wait, why are you like up descending to me if I'm condescending to you? What was that? What do you mean, remind that I'm an, an adult male? Is that what you said? Yeah. I also get to condescend to you now when you're at the point of condescending to me. You're not okay. going to treat me like I'm a f***ing idiot. I have been doing this for a long time. Like, this is this is what I do. You're 19. Right? I don't think so, you've been doing anything for a long time, but go ahead. I have, yeah. Okay. I know that, I know that having this job is not as impressive as being a 30-year-old streamer, but I 34? take what I can get. That's okay. Oh, I'm so sorry, 34. You're fine, streamer. don't worry. <laughs> Would it be okay, do you think, to kill somebody who is in a coma that we know they'll wake up in nine months? Do you think that's okay? Nope. Why is that not okay? Because there is a prior conscious experience that probably asserted its rights and its liberties and its desire to stay alive. And just because that experience temporarily abates doesn't mean that you would end it or prevent it from coming back. Oh, shit. It's almost like even if you don't have that experience at a certain point in time, if you are going to have that experience and you have the capacity for it, then I don't know, maybe we should be protecting that person and that is still a human life, even though they're not actively consciously experiencing something. That's crazy. Can we talk about abortion as a concept now? Sure, so I didn't say because they're going to have an experience. I said that because they've already had one. There's something to speak about. If I go to sleep, that's not really being unconscious, but if I get like, am, uh, um, uh, not amnesia, um, uh, and uh, general anesthesia if I get general anesthesia and I'm like unconscious for a while there was still somebody called Stephen to speak of I had an experience I asserted some belief my ability to redeploy that belief is there it's coming back um, that's there's a difference between that versus somebody that's never even existed yet right both parts the prior and the after to that unconscious thing are equally important if you're missing one then you don't have the same thing I mean, fetuses exist, like, regardless of whether or not... A fetus exists, but I'm not talking about protecting a fetus. I'm talking about protecting a conscious experience. Well, okay, so I... 
So we're not talking about protecting people. We're not talking about protecting human life. We're talking about protecting this subjective concept of conscious yep. experience that you come up with. Yep. Well, that's what we do medically as well, right? That's why we don't say bodily death is when a person dies. We say brain death. It's the cessation of that conscious experience. That's what a persistent vegetative state is. You sit there like a vegetable and your body can even have some functions that happen as long as it's being fed, but the brain is gone and you're never coming back awake. So by subjective conscious experience, like, are you just talking about memories? Are you talking about like, like what, I think memories what, are what a part of it. Some consistency of your mind, some self identity. I'm sure there's like a lot, I don't know all the different underpinnings of like all the different parts that make us conscious, just that there's some wholly conscious emergent experience that happens when some structures in the brain are communicating with each other. Like, like again, newborn babies don't have anything like that. <laughs> anything like that you don't think they have any degree of consciousness whatsoever i mean they're awake but they're not like okay they're awake newborn babies good enough don't for me have a personality newborn babies don't have newborn any babies have huge memories. personalities some of them cry some of them don't that's a reaction to stimuli like they, they don't have i don't know why this is funny to you this is objective like they don't have memories they don't have a personality they, like they don't Newborn babies don't have any of those things. Not, not in any way that's any different from a 19-week baby in the womb. Like, they don't. I think it's significantly different from a 19-week baby. But, I mean, they might have, uh, it might not be as developed as a two-year-old or a five-year-old, right? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, why would you protect a, a one-celled organism? Just curious. The fetus. Fetuses are not single-celled. <laughs> Well, You're but, but like you would hold on. You would protect about? it. Yeah, you would protect it as a single cell, as a zygote. You would protect that. So I'm just curious why. Because life begins at conception. Yeah, but well, that's kind of circular, right? Come on, Aeoli, give me a better one than that. Why? Why does life begin at conception? Can you stop being like really disrespectful about the pronunciation of my name? My name is Ayala. It's incredibly easy to pronounce. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to do better. I'm sorry. Like, it's just really weird. Like, I don't know why you're attempting to put me down and degrade me by mispronouncing my name consistently as if it is funny. Well, I'm, it's, I'm having a little bit of fun because I genuinely think you're a, a disgusting human being. But you're only 19, so I, like, I let you get a little bit of a pass on it. Um, like, what's, what's funny about mispronouncing my name? Because it's Hebrew, because you don't understand it. Like, it's not hard to say. Well, right now, it's just because it's triggering the fuck out of you, to be honest. But Well, it's because it's just so weird. Like, this whole time, you're just trying to exhaust me with all of these like different tangents and you're trying to put me down consistently and mm -hmm. calling me a disgusting person if i'm so disgusting why are you talking to me i like talking to pro-lifers and you seem to express an interest to talk to me over mm -hmm. twitter so i was curious if we had an argument that i hadn't heard yet and maybe right now maybe i'm planting the seeds and uh, you know that <laughs> I, I promise you that there is nothing that you have said to me in this entire conversation that i've never heard before i mean you literally went on like what god that podcast with lila rose and you were like uh -huh. if a fetus is a person then, uh, that's like saying that nut is a tree and then you quote tweeted me and you were like you're basically saying that a caterpillar and a butterfly are the same thing and like yes they are the same organism but it's just it's like you are not morally superior to me uh -huh. because you are a live stream debate bro like i don't understand why you feel comfortable putting me down right now this is very weird and i don't feel comfortable having a conversation with someone who is sitting here condescending to me, calling me disgusting, uh -huh. and acting like I'm not worth your time. See, even if I'm not worth your time, then why are you talking to me? I didn't say you weren't worth my time. I get paid big bucks to talk to people like you. You can leave anytime you want. If you're bothered, it seems like you're bothered. You can always go. It's okay. I just don't understand like what your point is. Like, I'm not going to continue discussing with you if you're going to keep every five minutes mispronouncing my name and saying that I'm disgusting and saying that I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, this is just very weird. Okay, ayahuasca. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm asking you to stop talking to me that way okay well we're i think we've reached the end where what else is there anything else you want to bring up or i mean i'm fine having a conversation with you but i'm not going to tolerate someone disrespecting me consistently in this manner and like yes i am upset by that and i don't understand why that's funny to you uh -huh. but i like if you're if you're trying to have an adult conversation with me and you're not gonna have me here being sarcastic and being stupid like i normally am like you want to have a real conversation we can do that 
But yes, I am getting frustrated because you are condescending to me and disrespecting me in ways that I don't find acceptable. Sure. So I did want to have a real conversation, but a couple things. One, you called me Steven multiple times, even after I asked you not That's to. That's your real name. It's your name on Instagram. Sure. But it's not to get into interpersonal dynamics, but saying somebody's name over and over and over again is considered really rude. Um, I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Uh, number one, number two. I think you were the one that wheeled out the age thing first. I could be wrong, but you were like no, you're you like a thirty year old gamer streamer person. Did you said you're how old? Nineteen. That's when we got on this. This. this you didn't bring thing. up the thirty year old gamer thing before that. I don't remember. No, or not. I promise you, I didn't. Okay, we'll check. I guess everyone in chat is saying you brought that up first, but we'll see the, the well when we replay the tape later. We'll find out. Some people are saying I did. Some people are saying you didn't. Okay, well, I don't know, but um. Uh, also, yeah, you seem to be unwilling to engage with any of the argument other than to just, uh, do you just want to repeat like a feed? Uh, like, I'm giving I'm you a chance. I'm trying to have a conversation sure. with you. Well, I asked you to tell me why do you think a zygote, I asked you. I'm interested in talking okay. about how newborns are different than 19 week unborn babies. Okay. My question was, why do you consider a zygote like a person or a thing to be protected? That was my question. And then you said life. So biologically, it's living and by its very definition, it's human. Okay, so you're gonna appeal to dictionary on that one, or? I mean, it's a living human, so it's a person. That's what people are. Okay, but a person in a coma forever isn't? I don't say that. So should people in comas forever be kept there forever, alive? What do you mean comas forever? Like, like you if you're in a persistent vegetative state, you're never gonna wake up again, Should that? but they could be kept alive on machines. Should that person be kept alive on machines if their body gives up? Yes. Okay. Very brave. Um, <laughs> what do you mean, very brave? Like I. Well, it's not, nobody. You don't even believe that, but you just don't want to bite the bullet on the I, argument. Yes, I do believe that. Like, what? What do you mean you don't believe that? Why do you get to determine that? You asked me a question and I answered it. Okay. Ba and then you're based. Okay. Uh, well, then at least you're consistent. But if that's your position, then fine. You're consistent from start to finish. I disagree. But then we're like foundational now. And there's nowhere else for us to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can we talk about like... We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. What would you like to ask or answer to? Go for it. Why do you think that newborns, which do not have a real subjective conscious experience they are awake yes and they respond to stimuli but they don't have this subjective experience of consciousness that you seem to have been describing why do you think it is okay to or why do you think that we should not be allowed to kill them uh, i've is, never heard that argument sustained before that that newborns aren't having a conscious experience never heard that in my again life. peter singer makes this argument literally peter all singer time. is that's a philosopher that's literally in favor of like killing children up to two years old i'm not a peter yeah, singer i know and that's why yeah. i'm trying to i think that he is right in that sure, don't have because this peter experience. singer defines I think he's wrong that we should not uh -huh. i think he's wrong in saying that we should be allowed to kill those people though because uh -huh. i don't think that that's what makes you a person that's i think being, living and being a human makes you a person gotcha peter singer seems to have some definitions revolving around like cognitive capabilities like how many things you're able to cognitively do that makes you a person. Um, that might be a thing that's okay. Like Peter Singer might be on the fact of the matter more correct there than me, but I would err on the side of caution and I would say we should probably just go to like these kind of the, the parts of the brain that give you the subjective conscious experience. There's no real way to test for it. I don't know what the experience is like for a two week old baby. I'm not sure. Um, so I'd rather be safe and just go by when the brain seems to be generating it rather than like when a kid can identify themselves in a mirror. You wouldn't err on the side of caution by not killing babies in the womb at 19 weeks. I see I mean, no again, reason. Like, our oh, our science on this is not exact, right? And it's rapidly developing. So we're learning new things all the time about the capabilities of unborn children and their capacity to know and experience things in comparable ways to how newborns do, which is limited compared to the way that two year olds do. And we're learning that fetuses are in fact just another stage of human development just like any other stage and i just don't understand why you're so confident yet not confident in your position that like <laughs> there's a subjective experience of consciousness and like it's not well defined and nobody knows how to define it so we can't define it but we should be allowed to kill 19 week unborn babies because you think that that's 
or we, we have come to a medical consensus that around 20 ish weeks is when the brain starts to develop the parts of it that will deploy consciousness later in life. I think 20 to 28 weeks, it seems to be in that range. So it start at 20 to be safe. That's when the brain seems to have the parts that are communicating with each other that would be necessary for a conscious experience to emerge. So that's what I decide to protect. So I would say around 20 weeks is probably okay. If somebody showed me data, actually this doesn't happen until the child is one years old or one year old, then I say, okay, fine, kill one year old. So if somebody says, hey, actually the child is doing this at two weeks old, then I'd say, oh, well, I'm probably against all abortion. So just, just, to, just, to, just to clarify, your your personal definition of consciousness and the sub subjective philosophical wait 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 hold on don't say personal definition like i'm rolling around with a unique definition here but go ahead okay well your definition of consciousness in this subjective philosophical manner that you're posing it um if, if someone were to give you information that newborns for example aren't capable of having this form of consciousness, you would say it's okay to kill newborns? Mm -hmm. I mean, at least you're consistent. So then I guess my question is like, why not err on the side of caution like you do saying like, well, just to be safe, let's call it 20 weeks because we don't really know for sure. Like why just not just say, don't kill living humans? Because we come up with new data all the time on how fetuses, which are living humans, we don't come up with new data all the time us. that's changing yes, our understanding of this. Oh, okay. Well, if you find some, shoot it my way, and I'll be your biggest pro-life advocate. It's just—it's interesting. Like, it's not really that interesting. It's not—you know—you know, you know that like that passive-aggressive doesn't work when you're like, it's really interesting that, and then it's insert really like highly passive-aggressive, obviously I've untrue statement make there. You know, this kind of argument before. I've never heard somebody make this kind of argument before, and I will give you that because earlier I thought that. I hadn't heard any, or I had heard everything you were going to say to me. And I will admit that nobody's ever said that exact thing to me before. Nobody but said that conscious experience is what we should be protecting? Nobody has defined it and deployed it in the way that you have. Um, okay. Not just conscious experience, but the specific way that you define it. And it's admittedly subjective form, which you personally said. I mean, so all I conscious that, experience is subjective, right? We are subjects and we have a subjective conscious experience. It's like, we can't like objectively <laughs> measure. You disagree with that? I'm sorry, can you tell me about the objective conscious experience? So I think that Anyway, so well, like, no, no, no. I really want to hear this, no, please, because I, I feel like I, you have the answers to so many difficult questions in your head, and you're just not sharing it with the rest of humanity. Please, gracious God, please, Miss Ayatollah, please tell me what is the what is the objective conscious experience? You just call me Ayatollah. Sorry, how do you pronounce your name again? I just don't understand why you have these discussions with people and act like you are a rational, objective actor and that you're just trying to have a conversation like you've continuously disrespected me you just called me ayatollah i i don't i don't appreciate this like i'm trying to have a conversation with you about this like you asked i i stopped being condescending and disrespectful to you to my knowledge if i'm continuously disrespecting you please let me know but i don't understand after we already talked about this why you are continuing to disrespect me and intentionally mispronounce my name that was my mistake can you pronounce it one more time for me my name is Ayala. Ayala. Okay, Ayala. Can you tell me how you how you give me a hard objective definition of consciousness? I didn't mean in the sense that subjective consciousness is not. Well, okay, actually, let me start right over. Go ahead. When I'm talking about consciousness, I'm talking about. <laughs> that was just inconvenient timing. I'm sure she's coming back. <laughs> I'm so, so, so sorry. Stop removing her. I, she just, her shit is fucking up, dude. I'm sure she's coming back. She's on her way back. How do you pronounce my I, not I, Atola. I, Ayala. I, Allah. 
Ayala, I believe is how it goes. Hello, Ayala. So when we're talking about consciousness, um, I agree with the scientific consensus that there's different definitions of consciousness. There's different components of consciousness. So for example, like conscious awakeness where you're just like your eyes are open, you're taking in information from around you, like that's a portion of consciousness. And there's also like the subjective experience that you're talking about. But like there, there are scientific objective components to consciousness that like we can measure knowing that someone is conscious um, in terms of like conscious awakeness. Okay, we know all that, but I'm asking you, but you seem to get mad when I say like this kind of subjective experience of consciousness. So what is like the hard objective definition of cons consciousness? I'm not saying there is an objective definition of consciousness. I'm saying that you're banking on the subjective component of consciousness rather than the objective measurable components of it, like conscious awakeness. You're talking wait, about Wait, 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 hold on. This is what I'm trying to ask you. Hold on. You don't understand how close you are to breaking ground in some of the most important scientific discoveries ever. What is the objective hard measure of consciousness? I want to know this so badly. Can you please tell me? I'm not saying there's... Hang on. I think that you're misunderstanding me. Um, so what I'm referring to when I'm talking about consciousness might be different from what you're referring to. Okay. But there's a difference between like a conscious experience and being consciously awake. Like, yeah, like, but I'm not talking about just like being consciously awake. awake. No, 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 wait. Well, but you can measure somebody when somebody's to. sleeping. They're also like, that is a conscious person. They might be unconscious, yes, but when we I, talk about consciousness, a sleeping person does not like has no conscience, right? That's that's what I was trying to explain to you. Like, there's different, there's different components of consciousness, and there are objective ways to measure certain components of consciousness, like whether or not somebody is awake. Well, I, yeah, but you got to be really careful because when you get into those objective measures, those are what I rely on. The brainwave activity that occurs in children at about 20 to 28 weeks shows that that emergent phenomenon of consciousness is probably happening. The cessation of brainwaves when somebody is brain dead in a, in a persistent vegetative state is when we kill them, right? That's my argument. So you have to give me something different than that. You're not about to repeat my own argument right back at me, I hope not, because that would commit you to essentially all of my moral positions. What? No, I wasn't arguing anything. Oh, so then you don't have a problem with how I define consciousness because it seems like you agree and you just more or less repeated it. No, back that's not what I'm saying either. I I was so where we left off, I remembered that I was defining consciousness. I didn't remember why. You seem to have a really difficult time. When I say subjective, I don't just mean like subjective, like anybody how anybody wants to define it. That's not what, what I say. What do you mean by subjective? Sure, like we like our conscious experience is a subjective thing that's it's very hard to like discreetly or you know, in, in any, any kind of hard, solid sense measure, like, oh, there's a conscious thing. We see that. That's conscious. We don't, I don't know if we can do that, right? The subjective lens through which we view the world and the experience that we're having, that's like our subjective conscious experience. That emergent phenomenon seems to arise from the communication between parts in our brain. That seems to be the case. So that's when I would say consciousness starts. But subjective doesn't mean like subjective, like it can be arbitrary. Like that's not the same thing. I know what you mean when you say subjective. I'm pretty sure that you defined it a little bit earlier. Okay. I just, I guess I just don't understand, like, why you wouldn't err on the side of caution with our emerging, um... Well, sure, because we're balancing out, and, yeah, we're, we're balancing out things here, and we're balancing out the rights of women and the, the right to their body to not be um, eaten by another organism for a little bit, basically, and to undergo certain health effects. We're talking about that, and then we're weighing that against the potential life of a child. Right. So if it is the case that a child is living and is a person at some, you know, one week old or the moment of conception, then the autonomy of the mother takes a big backseat to that, which I think is agreeable. I think most of us would agree with that. But if that's not the case um, and it is just a thing until about 20 weeks and then there's experience worth protecting, we are condemning women to basically cede control of their bodies to the state um, or to other people to, to say that they can't do certain things to have bodily autonomy because of a thing, right? So there's a lot, there are two very important things being weighed here. So that's why I wouldn't, you can't just say err on the side of caution. That'd be like saying we should err on the side of caution in all homicide convictions and just sentence all of them to death so that they don't kill again, right? No, I think it's different to err on the side of caution to make sure we're not actively allowing legalized murder. Um, but I mean, you know, okay. So well, but it's legalized murder versus is, legalized. Wait, wait, like, it's legalized murder versus legalized enslavement, right? To, to, that's what I'm saying. So there's a lot that's at, at risk here. Enslavement? <laughs> Yeah, telling a woman that her body is going to be an incubation machine for a thing that might not even be alive yet 
is arguably like a form of a bodily enslavement, right? So pregnancy is normal, like reasonable care. It, it's not. It's not asking. Hold on. Wait. 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 Can we? Can you engage? Anything can you not? Can you not? Wait. 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 Can you not? Hold on. If if you rape somebody and force them, like just saying, like, oh well, it's okay. Like the pregnant part and the and the caring for nine months delivery. That's just normal development, right? That's not gonna feel that way to them, right? It might be normal development. Like, well, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Back up. What exactly are you asking me? I, I'm asking you to engage with what I'm saying rather than to like incredulously no, no, no. go down somebody, this. If you oh, rape God. somebody, what? If you rape somebody, just because that? something is like normal development doesn't change anything that I'm saying. There's a lot of things well, that might be normal uh, development that might be a form of enslavement, right? Like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hanging, hang on. hanging, hanging. So, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. saying that it is completely reasonable to say that women cannot kill a fetus mm -hmm. because it is a living human. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether or not it is having a sentient conscious experience, which newborns don't even have, it's wrong to kill living humans. And I don't think that it's comparable to slavery to ask women to not kill their babies, even if that means remaining pregnant, which is normal and reasonable care. Okay. Do you think that's a good summary of what I'm saying? I'm not really sure what you're saying. That's kind of why I asked you to repeat yourself because I'm, I, I don't really understand like why you said rape and like where that came in or where that was going. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, like I'm, I'm still not clear on what that statement. Was I think my, I think everything means. I said is pretty clear. But like, I think for, I think the issue with pro life, it's like arguing circumcision with men. Like they're really only arguing for what they are, and it feels the same when you talk to like pro life people. Like they're really only arguing from a position of either they've like had kids or had miscarriages, or they're like super bonded to some religious phenomenon, and now you're just trying to like ad hoc whatever argument you can to make that position coherent. But it's like super not fun for me to talk. I'm to. just, I'm <laughs> asking you, like, what do you, what do you mean, like? I, what do I? What do I mean for what? Just, I've, I've already just, descri I've described my entire position. Without definition, now you're like, now you're saying things like, "Well, you I think just, we shouldn't be killing babies." Like, yeah, of course, obviously. Okay, I think we should. I, I, I actually didn't say babies. I, I think we shouldn't be killing fetuses, which is what an abortion does objectively. Like, that's what an abortion is. Is she starting to sound more like lab? Am I fucking crazy? Fetus? Absolutely. That's what. That's the purpose of an abortion procedure is to kill a fetus. Sure, I agree with that. But the question is whether or not the fetus ought to be endowed with like the protections of life, right? To be a person, right? Well, yeah, because it's a living human, so it's a person. I, I can't think of a living human non-person. Sure, and I gave you an example. Somebody in a coma who's never waking up. Yeah, that's a living human, so it's a person. Okay, but then you also committed yourself to the position that people in coma should be kept alive forever until their bodies wear out. Which is, and I said, if you want to take that position, that's totally fine, but I disagree there, but then we've hit bedrock. We're at a fundamental disagreement. Well, if a person is medically living and they are a person, a person like is a, a living human, medically they are alive, mm -hmm. and they are a human, therefore they are a person and they should be protected. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I and if you and listen, if you have that, congratulations. That's your position. You are consistent. Most people probably wouldn't bite the bullet on that last one, but if you do, that's fine. But that means that we've hit like uh, like philosophical bedrock. Like we, we've. Well, that's to, why I'm trying to ask you. No, 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 no. So There's, you don't understand. There's nothing else to ask. We fundamentally disagree I, I, I on what a human life is. I'm trying to ask you to clarify a statement that you made to me several minutes ago, which I've been trying to clarify since you made it. I'm still not 100% sure what you meant by it. Sure, what statement do you not understand? Yourself. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know if I didn't hear you all the way, but I heard you say, if you rape a woman, something, something, she gets pregnant, that's still I'm saying care. that what I said was that the reason why I don't just quote unquote err on the side of caution is because you have competing interests here. You can't just go all the way to one side because somebody else has an interest on the other side. So one example I said was I wouldn't err on the side of caution by executing every single person who's caught a homicide charge, right? Uh, because it's, some might be accidental, might be must. I'm not gonna err on the side of caution. And the reason why I don't err on the side of caution by executing them all is because, well, we've gotta weigh the interests of the other people that are being accused, right? Um, and then, but one of the things that you responded with was, well, um, it's ordinary care to be pregnant. It's ordinary. This is like in line with the teleology of a woman, that uh, the development, the normal process of a woman's body is to have a child, blah, 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 which I, I guess I agree with. But one, that's not a response to that 
thing at all. There could be lots of normal processes that we'd ought to avoid, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, um, you can be forced to go through those processes in really horrible ways. So for instance, if you're not ready to get pregnant and have a child, maybe you even took birth control measures and you still got pregnant, or if you're raped. Um, these are examples of ways where you can be subjected to that ordinary developmental process, but still really not want to go through it for good reasons. Yes, I got pregnant from rape when I was 15. I'm completely aware that there are very traumatic ways to become pregnant. I'm still unsure as to why this is an argument for killing a human being who happened to be conceived in rape. It's not an argument for killing a human being who happened to be conceived in rape. It's an argument against the absurd notion that just because something is part of ordinary development, it requires that a woman cede her autonomy to the people around her. Being raped is not a part of the ordinary development. But no, but the pregnant, process that's it's, afterwards, you're all of a sudden committed normal, to? But being pregnant is normal care. That, yeah, but that's fine. But that just because that's normal care doesn't mean that you're morally committed to it. That doesn't do anything to seek to address any of the moral baggage of whether or not you ought well, to be forced to become. Well, because you were talking about how women being pregnant is enslavement if we don't allow them to have an abortion. I said that if you don't consider the fetus a human person and you force them to carry that to term or to when it does become a human person, that in a way, yeah, that's a form of bodily enslavement. I do consider a fetus to be a human I person. I know you do, is but I, this is a response I'm to you asking me. I understand that, but this is in response to you asking me, why don't you just err on the side of caution? And I'm telling you why I don't just quote unquote err on the side of caution, because there's competing interests. And one I side of could caution. Be killing a human person, though. Yeah, but you could also be enslaving a woman's body. There's competing interests. That's not enslavement. Like, so it's, so it's either we, so if, if you are wrong, if you happen to be wrong about where you decide to place where life begins in pregnancy at 20 weeks because you start to see brain waves which indicate parts of the brain have developed that deploy sentience later in life and that's your line if you are wrong then you are saying it is okay to kill living human beings if i am wrong and fetuses aren't persons until 20 weeks of pregnancy then the only consequence of that is that we are protecting human life, human beings, even if they're not yet persons. Can you can you summarize that other side better or else this is where the conversation ends? I can't believe you would be so f***ing retarded. Can you give me a better summary summary of the whoa, other side? Whoa, 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 You You, whoa. you can't really be this That's bad faith. I need you to give me a better, bad. okay, do your moral grandstanding. Then afterwards, I need you to give me a better summary of the other side because there's no possible way that that's like, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to play piano while you moral grandstand for like two minutes. And then I'm going to ask you again for the question. Can you explain the downsides of the other side if you force women to go through pregnancies they don't want to? And it has to be more than just, I accidentally protected life. Let me know when you're ready. I have a conversation with someone. Like, I'm not trying to morally grandstand, right? I don't appreciate you calling this morally grandstanding. Again, we have had this conversation multiple times where you're continuously disrespecting me and I don't appreciate it. You asked me to be here. And I'm trying to have a conversation with you. But you're not going to call me, like, slurs because I'm saying something you don't like. Th like, that tells me this is not a serious conversation. You cannot pretend like you're trying to have a serious conversation with me and then say a slur. Like, I don't... This is not morally grandstanding. I'm asking for a very, very, very base level of respect. Like, do you understand that? I, like, I don't understand why that's unreasonable to you. <sighs> okay. Can you summarize the other side of that argument more than just, we might have protected human lives? What do you mean summarize? So I, I was in the process of trying to summarize No, it, right? you weren't. I you were, you were still I, manning I, your I, argument I on both sides of it. And you interrupted me. And you interrupted okay, me. Okay, go ahead. I understand that pregnancy can be traumatic. I understand that pregnancy can harm your body in ways that are unrepairable. I, I, have, I have personally experienced these things. I, I understand this. I don't, however, think that protecting the life of living humans, which fetuses objectively are scientifically, they're both alive. They are, they are individual organisms with unique human DNA that are living and growing. I don't think that protecting those living humans until 20 weeks, dealing with all of the pregnancy issues that, by the way, we can address without harming other people. We can address the trauma of pregnancy. We can address medical conditions that might come up with pregnancy. We can address all of these things without 
killing a human life. I am comfortable with being wrong about this and saying that I'm protecting human life before it's technically a person at 20 weeks because it begins to develop the brain waves and parts of the brain that will deploy sentience later in life. I'm comfortable with that. If my if my definition of personhood doesn't si- like philosophically check out, I'm fine with that. But if your definition of personhood doesn't check out and I am right, then you are saying, and like what you were arguing is directly contributing to the murder of these children. I would rather be wrong in the way that I could be wrong than be wrong in the way that you could be wrong. Does that make sense? Yes. So can you tell me if you're wrong, what's the consequence on the other side? What's the consequence of me being wrong? Yes. I, I just explained it. Try Give me one more time, a little bit more simply. I, I don't really know what else you'd want me to say. I'm just asking. Summarize it. If you're wrong, what's the consequence of that? The consequence of me being wrong would be that we protect humans who are alive, but they're not technically philosophically persons by your definition of personhood being they don't have okay, their brain parts right, okay, of your okay, brain okay, that would deploy right, sentience right, later in life. Right, okay, okay, gotcha. I don't understand why you're... I know you don't understand. It's because you're so bought into this. You, you don't even consider another side, but that's cool. I don't care. All right. Is there I'm, any other I'm part of this you want to... consider your other side. No, you're not. I, I, you maybe you might... I just, I just came to the conclusion that I would rather be wrong in the way that I could be wrong than mm-hmm. in the way that you could be wrong. Okay. All right. Anything else? It is... There's something wrong with that? Um, nope. The, the, the good faith answer, I guess, just you can lie for future debates or whatever, is you're supposed to say, if you're wrong, you are literally using state enforcement to deprive women of the autonomy and the right to their own bodies against something else inside of them. Yeah, that's um, actually not, that's not what bodily autonomy is. <laughs> Okay. Like how would, like again, this has to do with why I said that pregnancy is normal and reasonable care. You're not denying women bodily autonomy. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to say? No, I'm totally Gucci. Um, Yeah, any shout outs? Where can people find you and all your stuff? feel like this has been truly enlightening yeah i agree yes this is every abortion debate ever with pro-life people but there's an example why you cannot have these debates especially with activists because you're way too dug into your position to ever change because it would probably require you to reshuffle your entire view of the world but you know know what's funny about that that i actually used to have a completely different um political philosophy and i actually did completely upheave my entire religious and political philosophy actually my entire understanding of the world and i've changed my mind on every political position that i've had to the exact opposite of what it used to be except the abortion position wow and my parents aren't for life i wasn't raised having that position i had that position following when i got pregnant from assault and that's when i formed it and i've never changed my mind on it and i think that this is the one thing that i probably won't change my mind on no and that's not proof that i'm not listening to you or proof that i'm not considering what you're saying Mm -hmm. i think it's proof that i genuinely believe what i believe and i have i've heard a lot of this before Mm -hmm. even if it's not exactly the way that you've said it and Mm -hmm. exactly the way that you've argued it and i still believe what i believe cool okay thank you for that you're super welcome uh ayala correct ayala ayala okay thank you i'm excited we'll see where you're at and a year or two, if you're in the same position or not, okay? Make sure to check in Thank with the you. DGG news desk. Will do. Okay, have fun. Be careful, buddy. Good night. <laughs> uh, I also didn't expect the... I didn't expect the... um keep coma people alive forever i didn't know that was going to happen and the um 
Oh, I did expect something, I guess it's like very disappointing to me. I think that this is actually, cause I actually, people ask me all the time, like, oh, how do you know if you're not getting in a circle jerk? Or how do you know if you're not like um, lying to yourself or blah, blah, blah. And I always give two really good reasons to figure out, or there's two good ways to know if you're getting lost in a circle jerk. One is the ask yourself, what would it take to convince you of something otherwise, right? That's a good question. You should know like, oh, well, if I found this, it would convince me otherwise. Or if I thought of this, it would convince me otherwise. That's one. And number two is, can you accurately argue the other side? And if you can't do that, you probably don't understand the other side enough. When I do these debates, and I'm, I'm doing this more, I realize it's a really good strategy. When I ask people to steal me on my position, and they just, they're totally incapable of it, they're like, oh, well, if I'm wrong, it just means we protected human life. Like that's, come on, that's not the steel man of my position. Uh, Kristen couldn't do it either. Cr Christian, Kristen couldn't do it either in the last whatever abortion debate. Um, when people can't give, when people can't like give like a summary of your arguments in a good faith manner, then they have like no fucking, yeah, it's dumb, but whatever. What is this? Russian stuff now? Um, we'll go over tomorrow. We also have to watch the one shit tomorrow too. Um, the Tim Pool and Emma whatever debate. Um, but I need to go. I've got to like clean my house and do shit now that I'm home. August, really? 